Attention EV enthusiasts, brace yourselves, as Tesla shares, the priciest on the market, are dipping ahead of a major company announcement. Meanwhile, GM has unveiled a groundbreaking zero-emission engine poised to make both electric and internal combustion vehicles a thing of the past. This revolutionary technology promises to be the next big leap in the automotive industry, steering us towards a fully eco-friendly future of transportation. Don't miss out on this game-changing innovation as GM CEO presents the engine set to transform the world. What's this cutting-edge technology all about? GM's quest for an alternative to EVs has culminated in the revolutionary compressed air technology. While compressed air was explored in the 19th century for mine locomotives and trams in European cities like Paris, it was eventually overshadowed by the immediate power of internal combustion engines and largely forgotten. Now, GM is bringing this innovative technology back into the spotlight, ready to reshape the future of automotive engineering. However, in the early 2010s, the French car manufacturer Peugeot saw the potential in combining compressed air with internal combustion engines into an all-new hybrid technology that retains the eco-friendliness of a regular hybrid without needing a battery. While these prototypes didn't move far from the testing stage, they did spark a fair bit of interest from the rest of the automotive industry, most notably GM. GM saw the potential that compressed air vehicles harnessed, but they also realized that such a technology needed a fair bit of development if it were to compete with regular internal combustion engines and the rise of EVs. As a result, GM started slowly researching and developing compressed air technology parallel to developing EVs and internal combustion vehicles. With that in mind, it's high time for us to tackle a very practical question. How do compressed air vehicles function? Compressed air vehicles function very differently from regular engines and EVs. Instead of having a conventional piston-driven engine or an electric motor, compressed air vehicles utilize specially designed pneumatic engines, also known as compressed air engines. These engines are, from a mechanical standpoint, very similar to regular internal combustion engines. The engine uses pistons just like petrol-powered ones do. However, unlike combustion engines, the pistons of a pneumatic motor are connected to a spring, and instead of relying on an explosion that creates the piston motion, pneumatic motors introduce air into the chamber, increasing the pressure inside of it, which pushes the piston to its maximum length. The air is then released, and the spring that the piston is attached to pulls it back into its original position, thus completing the cycle. Generally speaking, the engine is very similar to internal combustion engines and can therefore use a wide array of technical solutions, shortening the development cycle, which is what also drew GM towards this concept. With that in mind, it's time to answer the most intriguing question. What are the benefits of compressed air against EVs and internal combustion engines? Well, the most notable benefit is, of course, the fact that it is 100% pollution-free. It's just pressurized air, meaning that there is no environmental damage being done while it functions. As a result, compressed air engines solve one of the biggest issues regular combustion engines have, which is direct pollution of the environment. Compressed air engines also beat out EVs in this regard, as making a compressed air engine is far cheaper and requires no rare earth materials, unlike batteries or electric motors. Not to mention that powering EVs is also not quite green, as the grid is still mostly reliant on fossil fuels to produce electricity. Speaking of making compressed air engines, another key benefit over internal combustion engines is the cost of production. Since compressed air engines endure considerably lower pressures than gasoline or diesel engines, producing them means that there will be less need for strong and hardened steel or metal. This makes them both more economically viable and more eco-friendly to produce in larger quantities. While the differences might not be as substantial as compared to EVs, they're still there. Oh, and it goes without saying that the running costs of compressed air engines are simply unrivaled. Compressed air is much cheaper than fuel or electricity and is also much easier to acquire. Not to mention that these engines will be 100% future-proof as they don't waste anything. They just use pressurized air that, after it exits the chamber, remains structurally unchanged. However, as potent as they sound, compressed air engines have a few drawbacks that keep them from being developed and used on a wider scale. Are there any drawbacks to this technology? That said, DM has been working extremely hard on ridding this technology of its glaring issues, and they have been quite successful at it. First of all, the problem of the car's power has been solved with the introduction of new high-pressure air tanks. 
These high-pressure tanks compress the air even further, which translates into higher cylinder pressure. As a result, GM's new compressed air prototype achieves performance figures that are pretty comparable to regular gasoline engines. Furthermore, GM has also found a way to extend the vehicle's range. How? Well, by turning the vehicle's chassis into one large compressed air reservoir. However, this requires the vehicle to be specifically developed with compressed air engines in mind. This includes specific reinforcements or even the usage of composite materials such as fiber-reinforced thermoplastics. This allows the vehicle to retain exceptionally low weight while also being much safer than using regular high-pressure tanks, as crashing and rupturing the reservoir won't lead to an explosion no matter what. When will this technology be implemented? Well, the answer to that question is incredibly complex. However, there is a very solid possibility of these engines entering mass production in the next few years. This is because, as can be concluded, GN has truly invested itself in making this engine a reality. They keep researching and developing solutions to many existing problems and are incredibly devoted to creating a truly fantastic product that would revolutionize the automotive world entirely. Plus, the general mechanical familiarity and similarity to internal combustion engines allow GM to develop such engines much faster than if they were doing it from scratch. That said, it would be naive of us to believe that GM is doing this out of the goodness of its heart, as it is not. GM understands all too well that the days of internal combustion engines are numbered, and they still don't have a foothold in the EV market. As a result, GM is looking for a way to create a new market of vehicles that would allow them to dominate other car manufacturers while also making obsolete both internal combustion and EVs to further secure their hypothetical position as the leader of the new automotive age. But as good as this all sounds, this isn't the first time a major manufacturer tried implementing compressed air into vehicles. As we've already mentioned, Pujab has, 10 or so years ago, made a hybrid version of their Pujab 2008 crossover. However, instead of using electric energy, this vehicle combined an internal combustion engine with compressed air. The result was a powertrain that merged the power and torque of an internal combustion engine with the ecological component of compressed air engines. The said powertrain was able to achieve a hopping 120 miles per gallon. Unfortunately though, Peugeot silently abandoned this project soon after it was conceived, despite the very good initial results. There were no explanations given, except that Peugeot said they didn't find the project profitable enough, which frankly doesn't make sense. So why did they abandon it? It's anyone's guess. However, we believe that it has to do with large oil companies, as such an engine, developed and produced on a large scale, could potentially run them out of business. And while this might sound far-fetched to some, it wouldn't be the first time that oil companies did something like this. So GM, if you are listening, keep developing the engine in absolute privacy, or else it might suffer the same fate as Peugeot's hybrid or... If you found video informative so kindly like and subscribe.